Hi YouTubers, Jeff Cote here. Uh, we've got another installment of Ask PYS. So we've got a question from a fellow boater, uh, Mike, who's got a Grand Banks 36 Classic. Mike is about to install a new generator um, and um, he also wants to upgrade his shore power from 30 amps to 50 amps. And his question to me is, I currently don't have any galvanic isolator on my Grand Banks. What isolator would you recommend when I'm upgrading my shore power? So that's a good question. Um, well, first of all, when you're buying a galvanic isolator, you want to make sure that you're buying a galvanic isolator that is rated for the shore power connection that you're connected to. So some manufacturers will sell you a 30 amp or a 50 amp galvanic isolator. So first of all, buy the correct one. Some, some other manufacturers actually make, you know, they'll go from 30 amps to 67 amps. So it doesn't really matter if it's a 50 amp connection or a 30 amp, it's the same model. But do your homework. But more important than actually making sure that your galvanic isolator can handle the amperage, what I would recommend is also make sure that the galvanic isolator, if it ever was going to fail, was going to actually fail in a closed circuit. What does close mean? I mean, all these terms in electricity, I remember even doing my engineering, it didn't make any sense. It took me years to actually truly figure it out. I was a slow learner, as they say. And I'm like, what do you mean close? Well, close is basically imagine a drawbridge, right? So if you've got an open circuit, you're actually opening a drawbridge. And if you've got a castle and your drawbridge is literally lifted up, you're basically got a moat around your castle and no current can go through. And that's basically called an open circuit. If you've got a closed circuit, now the drawbridge is down, right? And closed circuit means that people can come in and out of your castle. So what you want to do with a galvan isolator is if it ever going to fail, and it could fail because of a power surge, a lightning strike, you want to make sure that your grounding connection, because remember in AC, you know, most boats, you're going to have a hot, a neutral, and a ground. Or if, with shore power, it depends. If you've got 50 amp, you might have L1, L2, and a ground. But you're going to for sure have an AC grounding connection. That AC grounding connection is there to save your life. And in the past, galvanic isolators would not fail in a closed state. They would actually fail in open. That basically means that you do not have AC grounding on your boat and you're back to a two wire system, which is no good. That's like going 100 years ago when these homes had only two wires. So what you wanna do is make sure that you buy a galvanic isolator that is fail safe. They've come in, in existence about 10, 15 years ago and uh, they're not as prevalent as I'd like them to be because a lot of boaters don't know about it, but I'm a huge fan of the galvanic isolators. If you don't have one, buy one and protect your underwater metals from stray current corrosion. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please ask it below or use our contact form on our website. Support us to keep this channel ad free. Happy to donate my time because I'm a boater too, but help us offset the cost of doing these videos by donating via PayPal or potentially buying some of our merch on our store. And don't forget to subscribe uh, so that you can keep having these weekly and we're producing almost four videos a week now. And thanks again for watching.